let us talk about the basics of hematological neoplasms. We all know that in the bone marrow, we have something called as a pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. And that is going to get committed into some particular lineage, like maybe a myeloid lineage or a lymphoid lineage. We're going to call that as a committed stem cell. And with the help of certain factors, for example, growth factors, they're going to proceed with one particular lineage like RBC, WBC or probably platelets and they're going to become precursor cells of that particular lineage. And these precursor cells ultimately are going to become mature cells. Like for example, RBCs, various WBCs and your platelets. This is the normal differentiation process that is occurring in the bone marrow. In case if there is a mutation or probably a cytogenetic abnormality, that is going to result in increased production of the precursor. Remember, this is basically a stem cell problem. And if that mutation or cytogenetic abnormality is going to be associated with increase in the production of the precursors as well as mature cells without any much block in the differentiation. Those disorders are called as myeloproliferative neoplasms or myeloproliferative disorders. So other name is myeloproliferative neoplasms. And what are the best examples? We have something called chronic myeloid leukemia, CML, polycythemia vira, essential thrombocytosis and primary myelofibrosis. We'll talk about that in detail later on. Don't worry about that. On the other hand, if there is a problem in the stem cell, like a mutation or a cytogenetic abnormality, that's going to result in a block of differentiation. The main problem is block in differentiation. So that your precursor cells and the so-called blasts are going to accumulate. What are you going to call that as? They are going to call that as leukemia, typically an acute leukemia. Of course, because of the block in differentiation, you are going to have reduced number of mature cells, which means there will be definite cytopenia. There is no doubt about that. And what is the definition of acute leukemia? You should have at least 20% plus blast in the peripheral blood or probably in the bone marrow. What are the exceptions to the rule? There are two exceptions. Number one, acute promyelocytic leukemia, which is associated with T1517 translocation. This is one of the signature cytogenetic abnormalities in the setting of acute promyelocytic leukemia, T1517, where there will be fusion of something called as PML rara. So it's a PML rara fusion. We'll talk about that. That's going to result in acute promyelocytic leukemia. Second, core binding factor leukemia, CBF leukemias, otherwise called as core binding factor leukemias. So what are the so-called core binding factor leukemias? We have two important cytogenetic abnormalities here. One T821, that's going to result in fusion of two important transcription factors, run X1, run X1 T1. So that is an example of a CBF leukemia and second is T1616, otherwise called as inversion 16, both are same. T1616 or inversion 16, which is going to result in fusion of CBFB along with MYH11. So these two cytogenetic abnormalities are examples of core binding factor leukemias. So if you have any one of these cytogenetic abnormalities, you can make a diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia. It is equal to AML regardless of the blast count regardless of the amount of blast in the peripheral blood or in the bone marrow, which means even if the blast count is less than 20 percentage, it doesn't matter. I can make a diagnosis of AML if any one of these three cytogenetic abnormalities is present in the patient. Okay, that is acute leukemia. In case if there is a mutation or cytogenetic abnormality in the stem cell, that's going to result in abnormal and dysplastic maturation. Abnormal and dysplastic maturation. So that you are going to see more of dysplastic cells. By definition, the number of dysplastic cells or the proportion of dysplastic cells should be more than 10% in the peripheral blood or probably in the bone marrow. You are going to call that as myeloid dysplastic syndrome. To be honest, you can see a little bit of blast in MDS also because there is an abnormal maturation. There will be a little bit of block in differentiation. So patients can have circulating blast in the peripheral blood or probably blast in the bone marrow also. but by definition, the blast should be less than 20 percentage. If the blasts are more than equal to 20 percentage, it becomes acute leukemia, right? So that's why there's a clear cut 
criteria for diagnosing MTS whether dysplastic cells should be more than 10 percentage but the blast should be less than 20 percent. In most cases it will be less than 5 percentage to be honest. That is myelodysplastic syndrome. Because all of these are basically problems of the stem cells, right? All of these are basically problems of the stem cells. You can actually get transformation into acute leukemias. For example, a myeloproliferative disorder. Over time, there is a risk of getting transformed into acute leukemia like AML. And even patients who are having myelodysplastic syndrome can get transformed into AML over time. So that is another important point that you have to know. There is a risk of transformation to AM with regards to both myeloproliferative neoplasms as well as myelodysplastic syndromes. All right.